What is the intention of your short bill, which is coming in, I think, on Tuesday? Well, this bill is very straightforward. It would set the date for the next election on the 9th of December, but crucially, it would be conditional on there being an extension to Article 50, which would mean no deal was taken off the table. One of the big concerns many people have had about going into a general election has been the fear that we would crash out of the EU without a deal, either during that election or in the immediate aftermath. And our bill removes that threat. So for all those people who don't trust Boris Johnson not to get us out without a deal, the bill sorts that, but it also gives Boris Johnson what he wants, which is an early general election. Well, we, we think we need to resolve this impasse. It's also important that we send a message to the EU because they have not yet granted the extension past Thursday the 31st of October. We thought they might have done on Friday. They have said they're going to wait to see what happens on Monday. And it's important that they recognise that Parliament is able to act. Last time they said don't waste the time, Boris Johnson has taken time yeah. wasting to a new level, proroguing Parliament, yes. not trying to get a deal. Okay. We need to resolve it. I think the best way to do that would be a people's vote. But in the absence of proper Labour numbers to do that, a general election would be the for. other way. And do you think this is going to change President Macron's mind? Because he was talking about a much earlier extension. Well, I think it gives some certainty that there is a majority in Parliament to, to move on and put this back to the public, because that is what needs to happen. We have a bad Brexit bill, a uh, Brexit deal that Boris Johnson has negotiated, and you know that isn't something that's going to be good for our country, and we need to be able to let people have their say. So you've done this with the SNP, but there's still a big question of numbers. Can I ask, have you spoken to Boris Johnson about this? I haven't spoken to Boris Johnson, but I think the challenge is absolutely on him, because if he is serious about wanting an election, and if he's genuine that it's about having an election before Christmas, then he can back this bill. Because the other problem with his plan is that it leaves the ability to set the date of the election down to the Prime Minister. Now, he says the 12th of December, but, I mean, this is a man that's prepared to say well, anything. He doesn't do what he says. The advantage of this bill is it enshrines the date in the law, and we know that ultimately, when push comes to shove, he has been forced to obey the law, whether that was on recalling Parliament or whether that was on sending that letter to request the extension. The Fixed Term Parliament Act, as I understand it, should give Parliament some certainty about election dates. Prime Ministers can't uh, dissolve Parliament for an election and then just keep putting it off until we crash out. But nonetheless, I see the argument behind that. What about Jeremy Corbyn? Because he's also part of the, the numbers game, of course, and his position is still unknown. Have you been talking to him? Have you been talking to the Labour Party about getting their support for your motion? Well, yes, we've made sure we sent our, our proposals over to the Labour Party, so it will be you know, good to see whether they support this, because again, you know, Jeremy Corbyn has said quite reasonably that he didn't want to support an election while there was the threat of no deal crashing out without a deal and of course this removes that threat so you know they they should be able to support this proposal somebody and i can't remember who it was was tweeting overnight i'm beginning to wonder whether the lib dems have a bit of a death wish and the reason they're saying that is we're now heading for an election uh, we, we we assume if this goes through on tuesday um and you're going to be facing two parties one which has with boris johnson whatever you think of boris johnson he is a formidable campaigner with a lot of money and a lot of heft behind him and a single clear message about brexit on the one hand and on the other hand you've got jeremy corbyn's labor party second largest party or possibly the largest party in europe half a million people knocking on doors he's also a very very good campaigner and you're going to see really two huge machines traditionally i'm afraid the lib dems have got rather squashed between them why is that not going to happen this time well, things are very different now. We've got two men who are stuck in different versions of the past and we are offering a genuinely brighter future where we stay in the EU and we're able to get on with tackling the issues, whether it's the climate emergency or how we move our country forward. I relish the chance to take on both Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn because neither one of them is fit to lead our country. That's why I'm standing as a candidate to be Prime Minister. And you use that phrase again, I'm going to be Prime Minister, but the truth of the matter is that is an absolutely awesome mountain to climb for the Liberal Democrats. To get, um, uh, Chuka Muna talked about getting 200 seats. To get 200 seats. You'd have to win seats like Warrington North, a very famous Cheshire seat. Uh, Roy Jenkins failed to take it for the SDP a long time ago. You came not second, not third, 
but fourth behind UKIP with just two point something percent of the vote last time. The chances of you taking Warrington North from the Labour Party, a safe Labour seat, are almost nil. Well, I'm not going to get into the specifics of whether that seat needs to be on the, the path to victory, but what is the case is that the Liberal Democrats beat both the Conservatives and the Labour Party in the European elections, the first time that had happened for a hundred years. We have had tens of thousands of people joining our party. We have been attracting MPs from both the Conservatives and the Labour Party. And, and the, the but politics have, I'm sorry, is but different I now. I know it's that, different but now. the European elections are very different. A general election, you have to take seats like Whitney, David Cameron's old seat, which got a huge majority to overturn, well, 25,000 Tory majority uh, in Whitney, I, in Oxford. Oh, I mean, if you look at what we did at the by-election, actually, we, we ran the Conservatives pretty close. So there, there are seats that we have never won before that are absolutely in contention now. You mention the machines of the other parties. We are raising more money than we have ever raised before. We have got more members than we ever have before. And it's because mm. people are appalled at Boris Johnson and the way he is leading our country into disaster. Mm. They are appalled by the lack of leadership from Jeremy Corbyn. And they see that there is a genuine well, alternative one, one under thing, my leadership of the Lib Dems. One thing that that's Jeremy why they're Cor joining us. One thing that Jeremy Corbyn has perhaps noticed is that the Remain side of the argument is divided between those who want another referendum, the people's vote side, and those who simply want to revoke. You have put your money very heavily on revoke, which sounds to me as if you're saying to people at the next general election, if you want to sort this out with another big democratic moment, another referendum, don't vote for us. We're revoke. We're pull the plug completely. The Liberal Democrats believe that our best future is within the European Union, and so we are the party that is the biggest and strongest party of Remain. We want to stop Brexit. We can't be clearer about that. And so if mm. we win a Liberal Democrat majority, of course we will revoke Article 50. That doesn't mean that we will stop campaigning for a people's vote in circumstances where we don't win a majority, yeah. because that may then be the route to do it. We okay, are about let's, let's, stopping Brexit. Let's just come back to your bill coming in on Tuesday. Um, is that amendable? Because I guess some Conservatives will think it could be amended to put in uh, lowering the voting age to 16 or uh, retaining membership of the Customs Union or even for another referendum. Can it be amended? Will you accept amendments? Uh, I mean... Any bill in Parliament could be amended, but the intention is very much that this is a simple bill that can be passed through Parliament quickly. Of and course, so you won't be supporting look, amendments? Of course, I, of course I would love to see votes at 16, as we have in Scotland for most elections. I've campaigned on it for many years, but I recognise that the time pressures that we are under right now don't give us that luxury, because the 31st mm. of January isn't that far away so and so we do we cannot no guarantee please. We, I, yeah i think we need to pass this as as it is mm. drafted the you we cannot we cannot assume that we will always keep getting extensions to Article 50. We do need to resolve this issue. I, I've worked hard in Parliament to try to secure a majority for a people's vote. It hasn't been forthcoming. Even this week, we tabled an amendment. We have tabled amendments for a people's vote 17 times, and Labour have not backed them in sufficient numbers. In contrast, 19 yeah. Labour MPs voted for Boris Johnson's deal. Joe Swinson, you mentioned Scotland just now. Apart from winning new seats, you have to defend your own seats. You've got a 5,000 majority. You, you've been talking to the SNP, but you know you are a key target for the SNP. Uh, now that you're leader of the Liberal Democrats across the UK, are you going to switch seats to ensure that you get back next time? Absol Are you going to, you're absolutely not, not. I represent Eastern Bartonshire. It's the place where I grew up. It's my home seat. I won it in 2005. I won it back again in 2017 from the SNP. And I will never be complacent, yes. but I am confident that I will win that seat again if the good people of Eastern Bartonshire want me to continue being their MP as well as being leader of the Liberal Democrats. But if Nicola Sturgeon's formidable machine washes over the good people of Eastern Bartonshire and you lose, do you then step down as <laughs> Lib Dem leader? I mean, th th this is a hypothetical and a hypothetical. Let's bear in mind that the, the candidate that, that I beat at the last election has decided that this is not a seat that he plans to fight me again in and he's he's headed off to a different seat. Right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm standing in my seat and I'm confident that people in Eastern Bartonshire will choose me to continue as their MP. You, you very vividly described the Prime Minister and the leader of the Labour Party as two men stuck in the past just now. There was a very controversial tweet that you put up recently. Let's just look at it. We haven't got it, I beg your pardon. You talked about six white men stuck in a room. 
That suggested to a lot of people as if you were underestimating the number of uh, British, black and Asian voters who voted for uh, Brexit and also the number of women who voted for Brexit. It sounds like you're putting down... No, uh, putting not, them no, down. no, not at all. My point was about who is in the room when the decisions are being made. White men are an important part of mm -hmm. our society. They make up about 42% of our society. But to say that you have six people in a room making a crucial decision like mm -hmm. that, and they are all from that 40% of society, that's not the but best way to get good decision-making. Diversity, we all know, is good for better decision-making. I guess I'm wondering why, why their, their colour and gender matters, because Jeremy Corbyn is in that position because huge numbers of black and Asian Britain, many of them women, voted for him and wanted him to be there. He's representing them. It's a representative democracy. Representation matters. And exactly. it matters that we don't just have people standing up for those that voted for him, but that the voices of women, of people of colour, of uh, disabled mm. people, of people who have different sexual orientations are all within our House of Commons and that that is what a modern Britain looks like. And I, I want to see us having the people who are making those decisions, not just uh, one group doing it on behalf of those other people, but that those are t truly drawn from the rich diversity of our country. And I don't think that should be controversial, frankly. Um, can you be a feminist and vote for Brexit? Of course you can. So, so you're not saying that the fact that they were men and white matters that much? Well, it matters I mean, you when know, you're... They, they are who they are. They've been chosen by people of all colours and, and genders. Well, and... I mean, Dominic Cummings and Seamus Milne have, have not, not been so chosen by, uh, by, by any uh, mm. democratic process. Uh, and, you know... It, you know, of course, you know, people can be feminist and have all different political views. Right. Uh, and so I'm not making okay. the point that you're suggesting, Anne, but, what I, but it is important that the people in the room making the decisions are truly drawn from the public at large. One very quick last question. Are we going to have a general election before Christmas? Well, I think that that is very possible, and the answer to that depends on whether the Prime Minister is genuine that he wants to do it in a way that gives the confidence we can have it without a no-deal exit, and we will okay. see how he responds to that challenge. Joe